For motorcyclists the whole world over, there is little to compare with the exhilaration of the open road. And a ride on the wild side, whether to get from A to B or simply for pleasure, is always thrilling. Ever since the end of World War II, when fighter pilots, soldiers and sailors all settled back down to a life of peace, motorcycles rose to prominence, replacing the void left after so many years lived facing extreme danger on a daily basis. The daring sense of adventure offered by motorbikes was totally life-affirming, and whether in the Hollywood movies or on the racetrack, these powerful machines became icons of the latter half of the 20th century. And in the post-war years, along with such classics as Triumph and Harley-Davidson, the Japanese manufacturers were rapidly making their mark on the world market. Of all the great Japanese motorcycles, the Suzuki name has always been synonymous with style and power. And from the classics of the 1970s, right through to the groundbreaking monsters of the present day, Suzuki can always be guaranteed to turn heads. However, we are definitely getting ahead of ourselves because the Suzuki story actually started at the beginning of the 1900s when the company's founder Michio Suzuki, building on an already successful career, developed a loom for the weaving of silk, another of Japan's major exports. In fact, by 1929 the looms were also bought all over the world and the company that had started off so modestly rapidly became a huge success. Nevertheless, Michio Suzuki was keen to diversify, and in 1937 he started a new venture, manufacturing cars, and within two years he had made several compact prototypes. But events on a global scale as Adolf Hitler rose to power in Germany meant that Suzuki's plans had to be put on hold. As the Japanese government signed a pact along with the Italians, joining Hitler and his axis of evil, the nation was soon at war with the rest of the world. A government directive declared that civilian passenger cars were a non-essential commodity, and by the time the war was lost, Suzuki had returned to the manufacture of looms. But Suzuki noticed other firms producing clip-on motors for bicycles as a mode of transport all over Japan as the nation's economy began to recover. From this concept, Suzuki took things one step further and designed an inexpensive, simple to build and easy to maintain motorized bike called the Power Free. It featured a 36cc two-stroke single cylinder engine that could either be used to assist while pedaling or to power the bike completely. And it wasn't long before Suzuki turned their attention to racing. By 1953, the company scored the first of many victories when the tiny 60cc Diamond Free won its class in the prestigious Mount Fuji hill climb, providing Suzuki with the perfect advertising opportunity. Building on this success, many more bikes were produced and the company name was changed reflecting this to the Suzuki Motor Company. And in 1954, they made the Kalida their first real motorbike, rather than bicycles with engines attached. Progress came at a rapid pace, and by 1955 Suzuki had produced a 125cc single-cylinder four-stroke engine that was fitted with electric starters that truly astonished Suzuki's European competitors. A new age was dawning for the motorcycle, and as the Aerials and Nortons dominated many racing circuits, Suzuki went on to develop a completely new machine the following year, known as the Kalita TT, after the famous Isle of Man races. This was a forerunner of the Grand Prix machines that Suzuki are still famous for to this day, and the Kalita TT went on to outperform its competitors. Way ahead of its time, this machine could achieve a top speed of 80 miles per hour and as well as a built-in four-speed gearbox it also boasted state-of-the-art turning signals. 
Having achieved so much success with motorcycles in a relatively short space of time, Suzuki moved into car manufacturing as well, launching the Suzu light car in 1955, but their motorcycles continued to develop at a rapid pace. During the 1960s and into the 1970s, Suzuki only created two-stroke engines, the largest being an incredible water-cooled triple-cylinder GT750. Their success with two-strokes was, ironically, as a direct result of the building of the Berlin Wall, separating East Germany from the West in 1961. The East German racing ace Ernst Degner defected to the West shortly after the wall went up, and as he'd raced for the East German manufacturer MZ, world leaders in two-stroke technology, he took much of their expertise with him to Suzuki. Within a year, he had won the world championship for Suzuki in the 50cc category, and throughout the 1960s, the two-strokes dominated in the lighter weight classes. As Suzuki expanded, a direct sales subsidiary opened in Los Angeles in 1963, and success followed success. The two-stroke tradition remained at the heart of Suzuki's development policy right into the 1970s, when their top racer Barry Sheen became one of the first superbike celebrities, ensuring that Suzuki motorcycles were never out of the news. A four-stroke engine was eventually introduced in 1976 with the GS models, and many of the machines we are about to take a closer look at have been built on this remarkable heritage. Time then to get out on the open road with a selection of state-of-the-art machines. And we'll begin with a Suzuki that without doubt is famous for exceeding expectations. What you're looking at is the M1800R Intruder. And although intruders generally tend to be looked upon as uninvited guests, this machine, aka the VZR 1800, is always welcome the whole world over giving the Harley-Davidson Street Rod, Kawasaki VN2000, and the Triumph Rocket 3 a really good run for their money. This intruder is the most powerful mass production cruiser that uses race-proven braking technology and provides the attention to detail that you would expect to find on a cruiser while still exuding sports bike power. Its cruiser traits mimic some aspects of the American machines that were built between the 1930s and the early 1960s, most notably those produced by Harley-Davidson. The riding position is feet forwards, which will naturally cause the rider to lean back slightly. But overall, this results in a very comfortable ride. And with its unique dip in the seat, this is a model that's ideal for those long distance journeys. This type of riding position is often referred to as the Western Saddle, it being not dissimilar to that employed by the fearless cowboys of the Wild West. Remarkable as it may sound, the Intruder, despite carrying elements from other Suzuki models, really does have its own unique style. It has dual slashed exhaust pipes, giving plenty of bad boy attitude, while adding to the overall contemporary look. There's a retro instrument panel complete with a black and white checkered pattern behind the orange dial. And at first glance, this model will certainly stand out from the crowd. However, when you take a closer look, you'll discover there are distinct similarities to other Suzuki models. The B-King 1300, which we'll see a little later, and the Intruder both have tubeless tires, perfect for cruising, as well as contributing to the bike's safer handling capabilities. Even so, the Intruder actually has the biggest rear tire on the market for a production motorcycle, measuring an impressive 240 millimeters in width. The fat tires are vital when it comes to road holding to cope with the power of this huge 1783cc liquid-cooled engine. And although the front tire isn't as wide at 130 millimeters, it still looks pretty impressive. 
When it comes to the suspension at the front, it's similar to that of the GSX R750, another machine we'll see shortly, with an inverted telescopic fork, which improves strength and rigidity. An absolute must for a bike as big as this that weighs over 700 pounds with a top speed of 135 miles per hour. The intruder looks amazing out on the open road, but when you get a chance to consider the engine, it does tick all the boxes for a 21st century motorcycle. To get technical, it's a 109 cubic inch, 54 degree V-twin that's liquid cooled with a double overhead camshaft. There are four valves per cylinder, and with a purpose-built version of Suzuki's dual throttle valve fuel injection system, you're definitely in for the smoothest possible ride. When it comes to gears, you're talking a 5-speed constant mesh transmission. And with a wet multi-plate clutch in the mix as well, the performance is all you'd expect and a great deal more besides. There is one big difference though between the Intruder and all the other Suzuki's featured in this program, as it operates with a drive shaft rather than a chain. The factors that will have influenced this choice will have been balanced between the desired performance, cost, and aesthetics. And for the M1800R, the drive shaft was the best option, adding a certain extra style as well as practicality to this powerful machine. The drive shaft is in most instances completely enclosed, but the visual clue that this is what you're dealing with is the tube that extends from the rear of the transmission to a bell housing on the rear wheel. This arrangement is without doubt superior in terms of the environment, keeping both noise and cleanliness under control, with the added bonus of it being virtually maintenance free. There will of course still need to be the occasional fluid changes to ensure the protection of shaft linkages and drive gears from the inevitable dust and sand on the roads. And while we're on the subject of lubrication, the Intruder employs a semi-dry sump lubrication system, which gives a similar effect to a dry sump. But the difference comes because there are separate oil chambers for the transmission and crankshaft using the transmission as an oil sump. The oil tank is still incorporated inside the engine casing, but the semi-dry sump method gives the designers more scope for lowering the engine and making the bike more compact. Right from its launch date, the Intruder M1800R was extremely popular, and watching this particular one in electric blue certainly demonstrates that style and performance are achievable in the same machine when Suzuki happens to be in charge of the design. Just a quick mention here for the attire of our rider, because with such a powerful bike, getting the best protection possible is essential. And the way to do this is with properly fitted leathers and helmet. The safety advantages are immediately evident, but you'll also find that wind drag and noise will be reduced, resulting in an altogether more enjoyable riding experience. And of course it really goes without saying, but aesthetically you'll definitely look the part. When you're looking at the top-of-the-range powerful bikes that are a showcase for the skills of the major manufacturers, the iconic features of such machines as the Intruder are just as you would expect. But for Suzuki, the principles of style and performance are to be found across the entire range. To prove the point, our next Suzuki is at the opposite end of the scale in every respect, but the attention to detail is equally as intense.
The model in question is the Suzuki 125 Van Van. And if you're not well versed in Japanese, you may be wondering what the reasoning is behind the rather obscure naming of this machine. A rough translation into English is bang, and it's generally used in the context of more and more or keep on going. And as you're about to discover, the Van Van does indeed live up to its name. This is a distinctive retro designed bike with a perfect blend of the old and the new. It was originally manufactured in the 70s, from 1972 right up until 1981, with an air-cooled, two-stroke, single-cylinder, 123cc engine. The Van Van was as popular as it was practical in its day, so not surprisingly, Suzuki decided to resurrect the design, and with new variations upon a much older theme, it was introduced to the market in 2003. Today, the Van Van has a four-stroke 125cc engine, and Suzuki decided to keep to the single-cylinder design to maintain the original 1970s concept as much as possible. The single-cylinder option had worked well since the outset for Suzuki with the Power Free, with a very basic configuration of an internal combustion engine ensuring a simple, compact delivery of power. Cooling is far more straightforward than that required for a multiple cylinder engine, which keeps the Van Van's curb weight down to an enviable 128 kilograms. This is a great bike for new riders and is capable of cruising at around 60 miles per hour. And those with more experience are equally delighted with the performance of this economical machine. Its long wheelbase provides a relaxed, stretched look and plenty of space for the rider and the passenger with a low 770 millimeter seat height and grab handlebars. Its stylish rear design has a unique tail light and the grab bar has integrated luggage carrier and hooks. The hydraulic single disc front brake is a feature that was introduced on the 2003 model and is now commonly used for most Suzuki motorbikes, complete with a drum brake on the rear. But even since 2003, the design features have been updated, and after 2007, the carburetor was replaced with a fuel injection system. There's also a smooth shifting six-speed transmission, and all in all, the Van Van gives a comfortable ride that is easy to handle even for the complete novice. Look out for the large, distinctly shaped and high positioned muffler with the Suzuki Pulsed Secondary Air System, which tends to be better known as PAIR. Filtered fresh air is injected into the exhaust ports, reducing carbon monoxide emissions, which will in turn ensure a much cleaner running motorbike. The Van Van, despite its retro good looks, might not be to everyone's taste. But there's actually plenty of choice when it comes to buying a bike in the Suzuki 125cc range. The Marauder you see here also has a single cylinder engine which is very economical indeed and boasting plenty of character, it still has a manageable curb weight of 140 kilograms. It's a great entry bike in the cruiser category and was the UK's top selling custom bike in 2002. Already we've seen a wide variety of Suzuki motorcycles and the diversity of the models featured is truly remarkable. However, as you will have realized from our brief history of Suzuki at the beginning of this program, the sports machines used for racing were absolutely crucial as the flagships of the great manufacturers. 
Although Suzuki made their name in the great superbike races through the 1970s, by the 1980s they were becoming limited by the big two-stroke machines. And when the sporty GSX R1100 first appeared in 1986, it was truly a case of catch us if you can. But time and tide wait for no man, and the same is true of motorcycle manufacturers. And what you see here is the superbike that eventually replaced the hugely successful GSX R1100 in 2001, the GSX R1000. From the Isle of Man TT to the FIM World Endurance Championships, the Suzuki GSX R1000 has come first time and time again over the years, as well as being voted the best international bike of the year by an incredible 13 bike magazines across the world in its first year on the market. Even the hugely popular 1998 Yamaha YZF R1 was surpassed by the lighter and more powerful Suzuki which could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in a breathtaking 3 seconds. The GSX R1000 shared many features with the smaller GSX R750 that we'll be taking a look at shortly. However, the engine in the bigger machine was a redesigned version of the already well-established 750 with the benefit of a bigger bore, longer stroke, newly designed pistons, and gear-driven counterbalance, resulting in a performance that was exceptional. And, as you would expect of an innovative manufacturer like Suzuki, this show-stopping motorcycle has continued to evolve with ever-advancing technology. Since 2001, there have been improvements made to the weight, power, and handling, as well as a further engine redesign along with the chassis to make the GSX R1000 the best that it can possibly be. With its blinding speed and effortless ride, this superb machine still has all its distinctive traits and instantly recognizable style after eight years of tweaking giving the rider an addictive adrenaline rush with each and every trip. What you're looking at here is a 999cc liquid-cooled four-stroke four-cylinder engine that delivers great power, torque, and enhanced throttle response, whatever speed you happen to be traveling at. The double overhead camshaft also adds to this machine's enviable top speeds and the more compact features of this newer engine have meant it's possible to have a shorter wheelbase and longer swing arm, all of which result in greater traction and acceleration. The twin swirl combustion chamber, often abbreviated to TSCC, is an integral part of this bike's engine setup and as the name implies, it was specifically designed by Suzuki to improve swirl and in so doing enhance the combustion of the fuel-air mixture within the cylinder, again giving the bike just that extra edge over its rivals. As a company, Suzuki are well known for designing their own parts rather than buying in from other companies wherever possible. Giving each bike the purest Suzuki pedigree, and this GSX R1000 has a fantastic Suzuki Drive Mode Selector. This allows the rider to choose from two different engine settings depending on the riding conditions. Whatever the weather, you can enjoy what this high-energy machine has to offer. And for those who are more interested in the journey than the getting there, the GSX R1000 is without doubt a winner.
Another tailor-made feature is the Suzuki Advanced Exhaust System. This uses an under-engine chamber and low-slung, large-volume MotoGP-inspired titanium mufflers to centralize the mass and provide better balance. The result will be a smooth, speedy ride, and if you want to carry a passenger, they too will enjoy an exhilarating experience in a surprising degree of comfort. This is quite unusual for a sports bike, and Suzuki have certainly paid careful attention to the comfort of the ride by creating a carefully shaped seat and adjustable foot pegs with a pillion seat cowl included for solo rides or track days. The position lights each have layered lenses with a blue tint for an even sportier look. And the powerful main headlight will let everyone know you're around with its vertically stacked high and low beam halogen bulbs. The instrument panel, as you might expect, is loaded with the latest in gadgetry, with everything strategically placed for easy reading, as well as there being a few added extras including a lap stopwatch controlled from the right handlebar. Even if you don't get to ride your GSX-R1000 around the track, the fact that you could if you wanted to is always a thrilling prospect. The Suzuki GSX-R family of bikes have always provided superb power and performance since the first of them, the GSX-R 400, appeared in 1984. Various models have come and gone, while those that have stood the test of time have continued to shine throughout more than 20 years of production. And as promised, here you can see the superb GSX-R 750, showing off the good looks that are so much a part of its enduring winning formula. The GSX-R750 first came onto the scene in 1985 with all the style of a racing machine and a performance like no other on the market at the time. With an outstanding air-cooled engine, race developed double cradle frame, brakes and suspension units, this bike provided its rider with a completely revolutionary package. Over the years, not surprisingly, this machine has changed completely, yet each updated version has been faithful to the original concept. In 1985, the GSX-R750 became the world's first race-bred production four-stroke sports bike, complete with the most advanced aerodynamics. Smaller changes were made over the next few years, such as the addition of 25 millimeters to the swing arm, as well as creating a double R version for the US market. This model featured a dry clutch, updated suspension, single seat unit, fully floating 310 millimeter front brake discs, and a steering damper. The first major redesign of the GSX-R750 came in 1988, incorporating changes to the engine and the chassis. The double cradle frame was fattened up and the engine featured a short stroke design. The Suzuki condensed air intake ensured maximum efficiency and certainly took the design to a higher level. Four years later, the GSX-R750 featured an all-new liquid-cooled engine replacing the air-cooled one to enable Suzuki to get more from the 750cc engine and keep the power consistent at all temperatures. By 1988, the carburetor was abandoned and replaced with an electronic fuel injection system, similar to the one that they still use to this day, ensuring optimal fueling in all regimes. This model certainly owes its good looks to the design features borrowed from the GSX-R1000 and complete with electric ignition, fuel injection and a six-speed constant mesh gear transmission, it could be described as a chip off the old block. 
Also, this model has the most powerful, efficient, and cleanest running 750cc four-stroke engine. And it has been said to be the closest thing to perfection you can get in the motorcycling world. The inline four-cylinder engine is perfectly balanced, which results in less vibrations at higher speeds. And it's a specification well suited to the engine's capacity. The front suspension is, as you would expect, complete with an inverted telescopic fork, a trait common to most sports bikes. This improves the strength and rigidity of the machine, which has got to be very good news indeed, especially when you consider the performance of this bike. Both the front and rear suspension benefit from coil springs, which will give a much smoother ride, however poor the road surface happens to be. With its top speed of 170 miles per hour, you can certainly enjoy this bike's powerful performance, but its lightweight maneuverability means it's equally good in traffic for commuting. Nevertheless, the GSX-R750 faces some really tough competition, including the Yamaha YZF-R1, the R6, and the Kawasaki ZX-6R Ninja. But Suzuki have been far from complacent, modifying the GSX-R750 to keep pace with developing technology, which has meant this popular bike is always a contender. The GSX-R600 is also well worth looking out for, sharing many features with the more powerful GSX-R750. At one time, the only way to tell them apart was the fact that the smaller model had its telescopic forks upright rather than inverted, but they now even have that in common. This 600cc machine was originally launched in 1992 with a water-cooled 599cc inline-four engine. It wasn't significantly altered until 1997 when it was redesigned with the introduction of the Suzuki Ram Air Direct SRAD, producing extra power and performance. Further adaptations resulted in a fuel injection system replacing the carburetor before the launch of the all-new GSX-R600 in 2006 with its underslung exhaust and slipper clutch. Suzuki, just like every one of their competitors, is always keen to promote their machines as race replicas. But the first true race replica, in fact, came from the GSX-R series. And over the years, the minor changes that were made to develop the GSX-R600 technology helped to refine this bike on racetracks around the world. It was instantly a great contender in the British World Supersport Series, and today the latest version of this model exudes exciting new styling, improved handling, and great aerodynamics. Not only is it the cleanest running four-cylinder 600cc engine Suzuki have ever built, but it is also the most powerful and efficient too, setting a very high standard of performance worldwide. There is no doubt that the GSX-R series of bikes provides state-of-the-art style and performance, but it does come at a price. Nevertheless, the designers at Suzuki are just as meticulous about the development of their models at the budget end of the market. A prime example is the SV650, which was introduced in 1999 as a budget entry in the emerging naked bike category, along with a racier twin for the sporting class.
These bikes have become more widely known as the lightweight twins and the first generation of the SV650 street bike and the SV650S sport bike were manufactured featuring a mid-sized V-twin engine. The combination of their lightweight rigid chassis, excellent handling and the V-twins enviable mid-range torque appealed to novice riders as well as to those who were more experienced. These SV machines immediately became extremely popular due to the competitive purchase price and excellent handling capabilities, offering great value for money. When first released, the sportier twin was only available to the Europeans and Canadians, but American enthusiasts also wanted the S version of this bike. With lower handlebars and higher foot pegs giving the advantage of decreased wind resistance, further enhanced by the upper fairing, the SV650S was a popular choice. Suzuki began importing this model into America in the year 2000 and a redesign in 2003 introducing many modifications including a fuel injection system to replace the carburetor built on the SV's success. In the years that followed, Suzuki have made ongoing alterations to both models. It's actually the SV650S that you're seeing in action. But today, the fuel injection system has been modified to become digital and include the Suzuki dual throttle valve, which enhances the smooth operation of either of the versions. At 172 kilograms, this lightweight bike is stylish and straightforward with its liquid-cooled 645cc four-stroke V-twin double overhead camshaft engine. Interestingly, this makes it lighter than a number of its 500cc competitors. The V-twin configuration undoubtedly adds character to the bike, giving it a similar style to the eternally popular Harley-Davidson's, Yamaha Virago's, and the newest Suzuki M1800R Intruder. Its lubrication system consists of a wet sump, which adds to the bike's simple design, while the six-speed constant mesh transmission helps make riding a real pleasure. And when it comes to stopping, the brakes on this bike are as good as you would expect, with double discs on the front and a single at the rear. This is without doubt an eye-catching bike and even people who aren't necessarily fans of motorcycles will appreciate the line of this well-designed machine. Okay, so it might not be the fastest bike in its class, but you really can have some fun, especially with a responsive 0 to 60 when it comes to pulling away from traffic lights. The only disadvantage when riding in slow stop-start traffic is the straight arm position required for the brakes, which can put pressure on the hands. However, that said, out on the open road, especially where you get a range of twisting bends, you'll find yourself enjoying the most balanced posture for optimum control. The SV650s are ideal for real-life use, and with great looks, responsive engine, and a value-for-money price tag, they're set to continue as an all-round winner for many years to come. However, when it comes to enduring popularity, our next Suzuki is without doubt an all-time favorite. We are, of course, talking about the Bandit. It all started at the dawn of the 1990s with the 250s and the 400s, the much smaller prototypes of the magnificent modern 1250 Bandit that we're looking at today. In time, the 600 would be added in 1995, and all models could be counted upon to give a real sensation of speed, albeit not outright speed, along with enviable adaptability. Whether handling well about town or like a dream on the open road, the Bandit series have all the looks of a great muscle bike. 
And as the years have gone by, they literally have gone from strength to strength. For many years, the various sized engines owed their origins to the Suzuki GSX-R series, and they were all double overhead camshaft inline four engines with 16 valves. The 250 and 400 cc models were water-cooled, while the larger engines employ the Suzuki Advanced Cooling System, more commonly known as SACS, which combines air and oil cooling. It was 2007 before the GSXR derived engines were superseded by new fuel-injected liquid-cooled engines, and today's 650s and 1250s meet the European emission standards. The base model, or N-Bandit, is an unfair naked bike with a single headlight, while since 2000 the alternative S model, with its factory half fairing, has dual headlights. Suzuki Bandits have a reputation for being as close as you'll ever get to a production stunt bike, and are equally appreciated for being fun and practical all at the same time. The Bandit 1250S being ridden here is the sportier version of the naked bike. And with a top speed of 144.7 miles per hour, it is just that. Equally, the transmission with its six-speed constant mesh gives a superbly smooth ride when out on the open road. The critics certainly seem to have given the 1250S a favorable reception, and for a very competitive price, when judged against comparable but more expensive Yamahas and Hondas, it stands up very well to scrutiny. With a new, shorter engine, Suzuki have been able to fit a longer swing arm, and the suspension is, if not perfect, much improved. The bike steers really well, and by all accounts is as good at low speeds in damp weather as it is being put through its paces at high speed in perfect conditions while the improved torque and crisp throttle response have without doubt given this model a whole new lease of life. Another interesting feature is good news for shorter riders, as the height of the seat of this bandit can be adjusted. However, although you can do this yourself, most leave it to the dealer, as it takes a good 20 minutes and quite a range of spanners to sort out. Like most of Suzuki's lineup, whichever 1250 banded version you look at has great engine power and stopping control, courtesy of 310 mm twin discs on the front brakes and 240 mm discs on the rear, while the 1250S comes with an anti-lock braking system. Both models have similar technical data, but the sportier looking S with its half fairing will mean the rider experiences reduced air drag, improving the overall aerodynamics of the ride. The Bandit's front suspension consists of the common telescopic coil spring and oil damped forks with a link type on the rear. This manner of suspension tends to be used in many motorbikes because of its simple design that is relatively easy and inexpensive to manufacture. In fact, these brilliant bikes are really competitively priced, but you still get great quality and there's no catch, just a superb machine at affordable money. As our time looking at these amazing Suzuki motorcycles is drawing to a close, we've arrived at our final machine. And you could argue that we really have left the best till last. What you see before you is the revolutionary B-King, one of Suzuki's proudest achievements. When the concept version of this bike was revealed at the Tokyo Motor Show in 2001, Suzuki declared that it would never become a production machine. But some six years later, it was a very different story. 
Boasting an incredible starting system using fingerprint recognition and an engine described as the GSX-1300 Hayabusa with a supercharger, this motor show exhibit was indeed the stuff of dreams back in 2001. But as you can see, dreams really can come true. And you can now take a look at the B-King in all its glory being put through its paces. After years of waiting for the concept of the B-King to go into production, it actually remained very true to that original exhibit that had surprised and delighted so many people. For Suzuki to stick to the innovative design of this model was some achievement, as most concept bikes never get produced, and those that do rarely ever match up to the promise of the original idea. But Suzuki managed to do just that. And today, this fuel-injected, power-packed giant of a motorcycle with the same 1340cc engine as the Suzuki Hayabusa is breathtaking. Interestingly, the Japanese word Hayabusa translates into English as Peregrine Falcon, the fastest flying bird in the world, able to reach speeds of 200 miles per hour. The peregrine is also a predator of the more common blackbird, and this is where the marketing ploys of Suzuki got very interesting. The reference was aimed at the Honda CBR1100XX, more popularly known as the Super Blackbird, a close competitor for both the Hayabusa machine and the B-King. The engine may be a typical design with its four-stroke, four-cylinder and liquid-cooled features, but the B-King is one of the most powerful roadsters on the market today. The massive dual exhaust pipes are part of a large 4 into 2 into 1 exhaust system that is the perfect arrangement for a best top end horsepower of 181 horsepower at 9,500 RPM. As you would expect, the B-King has a 6-speed constant mesh transmission that works in conjunction with an innovative back torque limiting the clutch for smooth and controlled downshifts. And as all the adverts claim, this machine has prodigious torque and breathtaking acceleration. Even though the B-King gives the appearance of weighing a ton, it is perfectly balanced and carries its weight with ease, complemented by state-of-the-art chassis and suspension systems, and it handles surprisingly easily. Its curb weight of 255 kilograms actually helps smooth out the bumps in the road, giving a very easy ride at all speeds. And like the GSX-R750, which we looked at a little earlier, it comes equipped with a standard steering damper for maximum stability. Today, motorcyclists are pretty much assured of improved stability, thanks to good dampers and constant advances being made in design and tire technology. Suzuki engineers have certainly kept up this tradition, equipping the majority of their bikes with a standard steering damper to enhance the bike's performance at every level. Both the front and back tires have a rim of 17 inches and are tubeless as they are pneumatic and therefore don't require a butyl inner tube, which has its advantages when it comes to the cost of maintenance as they have a long life. And in the event of a puncture, it will tend to be of the slow variety that can be easily repaired. The front tire has a width of 120 millimeters and the height is equal to 70% of the tire's width, which definitely means better road holding, while the wider back tire at a 200 millimeter width with a 50% aspect ratio helps to enhance the full power potential this spectacular machine has to offer. The V-King has phenomenal power, but just as important is the superb braking capacity of this bike. Complete with twin four-piston calipers and a 310mm disc at the front and a one-piston caliper with a 260mm disc at the rear. 
It's also worth a quick peek at the instrument panel as this Suzuki is very well equipped with an analog tachometer, digital speedometer, fuel and water temperature gauge, twin trip meters, clock, maintenance running time, as well as average speed and gear position indicators. With so much information at your disposal, all you have to do is concentrate on enjoying the ride, whether in busy traffic or out on the wild side. Suzuki's passion and enthusiasm for pushing the boundaries of motorcycling is as pronounced today as it was when the company made its first tentative forays into the world of motorcycling. And if you need proof, you need look no further than the V-King. With its comfortable ergonomics and breathtaking power, it sets the standard for the perfect motorcycling experience, with Suzuki delivering a production machine that stayed as close as possible to the design concept they stunned the world with. As the old saying goes, all good things come to those who wait. From the very beginning, Suzuki have put heart and soul into manufacturing affordable, straightforward and easy to maintain motorcycles, using cutting edge technology to stay one step ahead of the competition. There are those that would argue that a few designs may be getting a little dated like the models that use single cylinder engines. But Suzuki have made their mark combining what they know works best for them and their customers alongside their more innovative creations. They may keep older designs in some models, but this famous Japanese company have continued to make modifications to even their most basic machines over the years they have been in production. These advances, despite on occasion being quite small, have made a huge difference to the riding experience. And the specialist Suzuki systems that have been developed have been truly groundbreaking. These tailor-made systems have also helped Suzuki to move into the modern, greener age, reducing carbon monoxide emissions as far as possible while still giving their customers the pleasure and freedom to enjoy a high-performance motorcycle. If Suzuki's past and present is anything to go by, then the future is set very fair indeed for this dynamic motorcycle manufacturer that rightly boasts to offer a way of life. Whether at motor shows or on the high street, Suzuki's reputation has been built upon producing award-winning machines that offer performance, versatility, and value for money. But more than all of these laudable attributes, excitement is the lifeblood of the Suzuki experience. And from the novice rider, right through to the lifelong enthusiast, the Suzuki sensation of speed will always deliver the thrill of the chase.